All right, thanks for tuning in again. Let's take a look at kinetic energy. This is a different form of energy. The symbol for it is Ke, capital K, capital E. And it's a form of energy, so it's also going to start with an object's ability. an object's ability to do work depending on its and this is where the difference comes depending on its mass and velocity mass and velocity Actually, let's get rid of velocity. It's speed. We'll see why in a minute. As an equation, it looks like this. Ke equals one-half times mass times velocity squared. Let's take a look at the units. Kinetic energy is measured in joules. Uh, there are no units for one half. Mass is kilograms. Velocity or speed is meters per second and we square it. So we get from these units meter square over second square times kilogram and that equals a joule. Okay. Um, so Let's do an example for this. We'll do an example of a car. How much kinetic energy does a 1,000 kilogram car have? How much kinetic energy does a 1,000 kilogram car traveling We're going to make it traveling slow. 0 0.5 meters per second. So this would be like the story, if you recall, about me pushing the car out of the driveway as it's in neutral. And it was getting going about 0 0.5 meters per second. Then I tried to stop it unsuccessfully. So um, had that car actually hit something, it would have had the ability to do a lot of work on whatever it hit. If it hit another car, it would have at least done work on the metal to um, to dent it. If it hits someone in the street riding their bicycle, then uh, it would have done enough work to apply a force to cause them to get pushed off the road. So let's see how much uh, how much energy they would have. So we know kinetic energy equals one half mv square. With this type of an equation, we have to be very careful with order of units, order of operations. Sorry. So let's plug in the mass at 1,000 kilograms. Velocity is 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So what are we going to do first? Multiply 1,000 times 0 0.5 or, and then do the exponent or do the exponent first? If you remember PEMDAS, you'll remember that first we need to do the exponents. So we'll do 0 0.5 squared, which is what is half of half, is another way of wording that, it is 0 0.25 and the units become meter square per second square. So that square is for the meters, that square is also for the seconds. And then we can multiply times a thousand kilograms and that gives us 250 and then we can multiply by half of that and we get 125 joules. Doesn't seem like a whole lot of energy. Um, even some of the bowling balls that you lifted were approximately had that much energy. So um, let's take a look at how this equation works. If the car had twice as much mass, we could say that its kinetic energy would have been twice as much. So whatever it hits, it may cause twice as much damage. Or let's take a look at the velocity part of it. If the velocity 
were to triple a car going three times faster, how much how many more times energy would it have? And the answer is three squared. We have to look at the square there, so that would be nine times more. Let me make that more clear. Three squared equals nine. So in the same way that gravitational force was highly dependent on distance because the equation had distance square, kinetic energy is highly dependent on velocity because the velocity is squared. It may seem a little unusual that this equation has this form that it does, one-half mv squared, but I'll show you in class a little bit, or maybe I'll put a supplemental video about why it is what it is. Um, I'm not going to ask you to know how to derive it or how to show where it comes from, but um, you may be interested. Okay, so with that, we're going to take a look at the next video where we'll do um, an example of how kinetic energy relates to work.